Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we'll be talking about asset templating in Godot 3. Most often, you'll be constructing a hierarchy of different assets and different properties, and you might want to reuse that collection of assets and properties. In most game engines, this is known as templating or prefabrication. The way that Godot works is when you're saving a scene, not only do you have the ability to save something like a level, but you can also save a collection of assets as a character, a prop, or anything that you want. As an example, I'll make a new scene, I'll give it a 3D root node, then I'll give it a mesh instance, and then we're going to change the mesh to a sphere. From here, I'll save the scene and I'll make a new folder. And then I'm going to name it player and save. So now that we have that collection saved, if we come back over to our level, we can go into our resources window, we can grab that asset and we can drag it into the viewport or into our scene hierarchy, and we can reuse this collection that we've built as many times as we want. Now another way that we can make these scene collections is if we've already made a collection of assets, we can go into the scene window and we can right click. And if you go down and you click on save scene as branch, this is another way we can save a scene collection. Now if you want to work or add to your scene, you can go to the icon next to the asset in the scene window, or you can go down to your resources and you can double click on the scene and it'll open it up. Now just the word of caution, if you're in your scene and you try and rename the collection, it won't carry over. And in your scene collection, if you rename the root node and you save it, that also won't carry over to your scene. If you made updates to the naming, you're gonna to wanna to go to your resource window and drag that scene collection out again. Another powerful aspect of these scene collections are the fact that you can nest them inside of each other. To show you an example of this, I'm gonna make two more. We'll take these scene collections and we'll place them underneath of our player collection. The first one that I'll make is something like a rock, and then the second one is a hat. If you don't want to drag your scene collections out, you can also right click and you can choose instance child scene. And in here, you can choose the collections that you want to add. Now we can save the player with the rock and the hat nested, and we can go back to our level scene. The player is living in the level scene, and the rock and the hat are living in the player. Now this way of working makes it really easy to work on different aspects of your game at a time. And it's even more powerful when it comes to working with a team because you can work on these things independently. So one last thing to show you is that this whole time when we were saving scenes, we were saving them as TSCN file formats. You can also save scenes as SCN. The difference between these file formats are that the TSCN is a text file format and the SCN file format is binary. To show you what I mean, if I open up a SCN file in Notepad, you'll notice that it's not readable, and that's because it's binary. And if I open up a TSCN file in Notepad, you'll notice that it's readable. If you wanted to, you could save your scenes as a SCN file, and it would be more optimized, a little more efficient, but saving your files as a TSCN is just fine. Eventually, when you build your game, the TSCN files get converted anyways. All right, this should cover asset templating. If you guys thought this video was useful, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.